Beast Saber is still an amazing game that everyone should play, as the name of this video, and a somewhat continuation of a video from Up Is Not Jump that you uploaded back in 2018. And you, yes you my friend, may be asking why I'm continuing a video that isn't even mine. The answer is, is because I find him funny. <laughs> Beast Saber is still a rhythm game, so nothing has changed there, thank fuck, and it still manages to make you move like the epileptic kid at a disco, whilst also making you look less uncool than playing a song on Just Dance. <laughs> If you don't know what Beat Saber is, it's a game where you hold two lightsabers that you've stolen off your dead Jedi friends and hit neon boxes flying towards your face at the speed of light, depending on the difficulty you're playing on. More on that later. That sounds easy, you say. Why don't we spice it up with arrows on the boxes you need to hit in that direction, and suddenly the game begins to get a lot harder. You think that's simple and boring? Say that to everyone on Steam that fucking loves it! After playing it for a matter of minutes, either by yourself or in a room with mates, you see the appeal, and could possibly even call it the, the perfect, perfect game, game in the words of a certain up is not jump. If you do play it for more than a matter of minutes, you may ask yourself, is this it? And while you've already certainly experienced the main thing Beat Saber has mastered, it still has many a bag of tricks to throw at you. The main structure of the video will vaguely follow Up Is Not Jump's video in the way of parts for each section, and while I don't have the same parts as his for the sake of originality, I'm sure you'll see the similarities. So without further ado, let's go! Mr. Up Is Not Jump has a good chunk of this section based on the feel of the game, but because I lack the finesse to make a section that long, I'm just going to split it up into three categories. So that's 1. Intuition, 2. Feedback, and 3. Difficulty. When you're swinging your arms around like a madman with a murderous rage, your arms have a lot of momentum. Yeah. I'm a scientist. So when it's time to fling your arms in another direction in time to the song, you need time to actually get them there. And the first party Beat Saber maps absolutely nail this. You feel like a Jedi blocking every attack Darth Maul could throw at you. Even on the harder levels, it's so intuitive, you just know where your arms should be at that specific time. It's just they need to be there faster, seeing as there's more boxes. <laughs> if you've played Skyrim VR, you know swords and melee weapons can be really fucking bad. Why won't you die? But oh no, not Beat Saber, because everything is made out of jelly, and you've got the 1000 degree knife. I think the best equivalent I could find is like badminton, but more satisfying. You know when you hit the shuttle... Cock? Nah, <laughs> cock. But when you miss, you feel like a buffoon that can't hit anything. The force feedback in this game is the only thing connecting you from what you're seeing and what's happening in the real world around you. So it's essentially the only thing keeping you fully tethered and immersed into this game. This blended in with the coloured neon sparks that explode out of everything you hit makes you feel like an all-powerful god that only tiredness can stop. WHY DID I DO THIS AFTER GYM DAY?! When this is all jammed together into one experience of mind-melting neon madness, you feel like Obi-Wan Kenobi if you'd taken the death sticks that are offered to him in the nightclub on Coruscant. If you combine this with the pulsating music that's being rammed into your ears like an uninvited uncle to a family gathering, you quickly become one with the boxes. Take this, BOX! <laughs> Trying to nail down a good difficulty setting in this game is like trying to find Madeline McCann after a night out in Portugal. Very difficult and without fuck all support from those close to her. <coughs> One second in this game you'll be gracefully dancing to whatever is in the charts, and the next second you'll be attempting to defend yourself against Disco Satan to the beat of the Wii Shopping Channel theme. Like Up Is Not Jump says, the difficulty jump between Expert and Expert Plus is like putting a plaster on a paper cut and performing fucking open heart surgery. I have no idea what I'm doing. Trying to ease someone into this game is somewhat difficult at times, because instead of gradually becoming harder, it opts for 16 mile high steps that lead you into ultimate transcendence, but are levels of funky enlightenment. It's only after you've taken 17 cans of Red Bull into your system that you actually feel like you have a chance of completing the Expert Plus levels. And because I'm not willing to take that health risk for a channel with only 47 subscribers, the majority of Expert Plus levels sit there taunting me for not having the reaction times of Lewis fucking Hamilton. And if you think the Expert Plus levels are hard, you should try some of the monsters lurking in custom levels. Some of these people have no soul. Like, what is going on here? What the game lacks on first view and quickly reprimands itself the moment you jump into it. Modes like 360 degrees and one saber throw themselves completely into the fray by offering unique experiences to anyone who actually has the ability to complete them. In modes like one saber, every strike has to be quick and agile with not enough momentum to ruin all the other notes. And while the concept sounds not too dissimilar to the base game, it takes a while to get adjusted to seeing as your other hand is rendered non-existent. Where have you gone? 
This mode is only the tip of the iceberg, with no direction mode, previously mentioned 360 degree mode, and 90 degree mode all making an appearance. So with that, you have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5! So you've got five different modes, all of their own difficulty settings, and each with the availability of modifiers. And if you wanted any fucking more, you can always get community mode modes like Darth Maul's lightsaber on community mode maps. I can only drag myself through so much pain before I fucking pass out. <gasps> What's this? To the 40 people that probably watch this video, if you wonder why my quality changes of microphone at this point in the video, it's because I got a new one, because my old one broke. So that's all good fun. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video because I put blood, sweat and tears into this bloody thing. Nice. I'm not even good enough to complete half the modes I've just listed out, so I have to rely on other people to finish it for me and steal their footage. That's how much time you can spend in this game and still find more things to do. It's a fucking rhythm game, yet it still competes with Fallout in replayability. With all these extra gubbins, the extra modes and modifiers constantly mix up the game with new elements that maybe would have been overlooked with less attention giving devs, and really makes the game feel looked after and sculpted into the masterpiece it will and always was destined to become. It really is like the Mona Lisa of VR games. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. The more and more I make this video, the more and more I find myself echoing Up Is Not Jump's points. The game fundamentally has not changed over the years, and has kept the same strong points that made it great in the first place. It hasn't subtracted anything during its tenure as the essential game for VR, and it's only added on to the already fundamentally perfect, perfect game. game. Beat Saber feels like one of those games that will never die due to its lasting impact it's made on VR alone. When I took my headset around to my cousin's house, it was the game we always went back to after scrambling for new times on Superhot, or exploring new worlds in SteamVR. It was the baseline game that set the standard of what to expect when you strap on a big box to your face with two lenses on the inside. This crammed in with the exciting nature of VR in 2020 always brings an unprecedented amount of fun bringing new people into the court of Beat Saber. Just don't forget to bring in the difficulty down again for your new friends. You said this was not easy! With the general nature of rhythm games, custom levels of custom music was inevitable with a small, dedicated, tight-knit community that Beat Saber has attracted. The variety of custom songs that you can install and play is huge. You've got legendary Britpop classics all the way to modern K-pop, ready to go at essentially any time. I mean, you've even got Gangnam Style! My dreams have come true! Games like Guitar Hero and Oast live on today through people in the community that continue to work hard into making new music and new modes for other people to play and enjoy, and Beat Saber is no different. Previously mentioned Darth Maul's lightsaber and custom songs adds an extra layer of love and attention that really sweetens the whole package into one well-rounded, extra-polished game that even your mum can understand. On that note, she's still not sold on my perfect score on Ram Ranch. Are you proud of me yet, mum? I wouldn't add something like this to a video of mine, but seeing as my god up is not jumped in it, I find it fitting I include one too. For £23 off the Steam store, it is quite a bit of money, but seeing as you already have a VR headset in the first place, and most likely no VR games already, it's 100% worth the price point. I mean you've already spent a considerable amount getting into VR in the first place, so just buy the damn thing. I promise that you won't leave VR for a couple of weeks, so I bring some snacks with you and possibly a couple new batteries if you have an Oculus like me. DAMN YOU BATTERIES! Oh, by the way, whilst I'm just stealing this entire video, I might as well just steal this entire joke too. DAMN YOU RAIN!